afternoon. Welcome to New Knowledge. How, how is everybody today? We're certainly glad to have you. Today we are going to be learning how to write a business plan. So I'd like to, I'd like to introduce Gary McGow, which is going to come and talk to us about that. So let us know what you're thinking about. Answer some questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, everybody should have a business card. Um, that, uh, that business card tells you how official I am, so pay attention uh, so you know what's going on. Um, before we get started, uh, I, I, I want to do a plug for uh, Healing Hands Health Center. It's a clinic in Bristol that does medical and dental and uh, eyeglasses and stuff. And, uh, um, Nancy Madigan is here from Healing Hands. She wants to give you a couple of minutes and tell you what Healing Hands is about. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you need to be. Uh, go ahead, Nancy. Just give them a give them a overview. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks for having me. Um, Healing Hands is a nonprofit organization, um, medical organization. It's about 22 years old. And we basically help people who do not have insurance between the age of 18 and 64. Um, some people do have insurance, but they don't have dental or eye. So I know that Virginia has rolled out a year ago Medicaid. Um, the difference between Healing Hands and Medicaid is the financial um, guideline. The difference is if you take like a three family, you can't make more than 29, 436 gross a year. For Healing Hands, a three family is 53. That's the difference. Um, so I'm trying to get in touch with the people in that, uh, the difference between the Medicaid and, med and Healing Hands. Uh, a little background on Healing Hands. Um, I have the financial statement for 2018 and 2019 hasn't come out yet. Just to give you a little background, we have throughout the year around 475 volunteers um, that work about 10,000 hours a year, which amounts to, if we had to pay them, about $430,000. So it's amazing the volunteers that we have. It keeps us running, keeps us going. It's what we're all about, helping the community. Um, we also, in the year 2018, saw 6,600 patients. Um, we also gave, in 2018, over $4 million in prescriptions. Uh, prescriptions, depending on what it is, um, we are with PAP, which is a national prescription association. Um, they provide medications for us. You come in, you need medication, you get a bag, we, we charge you an administration fee of $5. Eyeglasses are $20. Doctor visits, we have volunteers, we have uh, volunteers that come in. Um, I think it's two or three Mondays, nights after their job, the um, eye doctor comes in, does the exam. We have a room full of glasses, uh, huge dental, medical is the same thing. Um, there is a screening process. You would go through a screening process. Um, we are online. It's healinghandshealthcenter.org. On there, you will see the application. The first page will give you the information you need to come. Gives you our screening hours. Um, so anybody in Virginia, friends, family, if you know anybody that falls in this criteria between the Virginia Medicare uh, Medicaid and us. Um, we would love to have you come. And um, there is small charges for our fee, you know, to see the doctor to see, but it's nothing like if you had to pay for it yourself. Uh, again, eyeglasses, $25. To see the doctor, $25. Um, and uh, we are also associated with um, it's a brochure, everything I'm saying is in this brochure that I gave you. We do a lot of internships, externships with the colleges, dental, medical, um, Kings, United Way is huge with us, Virginia Association, the University of Tennessee, 
Virginia Highlands Community College, East Tennessee State. So we're hugely involved in our community and what I'm trying to do is spread out and get more people aware of who we are and to help our community. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you for your time. You, uh, you should also know that uh, uh, I'm a proud board member of Healing Hands, but um, Healing Hands also uh, has, a, has an agreement with the University of Tennessee Dental School. And so they send over dental residents for two weeks at a time, and they rotate two weeks on, and then they leave, and four more come. So they're, they're, doing, they're doing literally hundreds of dental uh, repairs and fixes and stuff that whatever somebody needs. So if you know somebody who is, you know, and statistics indicate that dental is a bigger problem in this region than medical. So if you know somebody who has to get some dental work done, Heal and Hands is a place to get it done, providing you're within the, the income differential. So anyway, just wanted to add that. Okay, uh, we'll get started on the, uh, thank you, Nancy. Thank you very much. We'll get started on the business plan stuff. Um, my name is Gary McGow. I do uh, both uh, small business and nonprofit uh, uh, counseling. Um, I'm one of those guys that helps you develop a business plan. Um, so um, what we're about to embark on here is going to be an information overload. Business plans are, are detailed and complicated. And so if, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to just stop any, anywhere along. I'll be glad to try to answer them however I can. I'm going to try to give you a few examples as we walk through this thing about uh, boo-boos that people make, including myself, when they're doing their business plan and they have a hiccup and say, whoops, I forgot this, uh, and some of the impact that that can have. So before we get started, let's just to get everybody, so everybody knows who everybody else is and what uh, your potential business is going to be, uh, let's introduce ourselves. Go ahead. Trying to open up a business called Honeysuckle Assist, and that's a senior transportation business. Ah, excellent. Uh, very needed in the senior community. Sir? Yeah. My name is Caleb Bell, and I want to do a business um, educating people on nature and the importance of nature with us. Excellent. Sir? Uh, my name is Shane Grossclos, and I'm doing a turf management business called uh, Greenville Turf Solutions. Turf management, okay. I'm Jean Barker, and I'm going to do a cut flower farm, and I'm thinking of a name. Okay. <laughs> I'm Katie Commander. I work with Appalachian Sustainable Development, uh, and a number of farmers who have all sorts of businesses, and we also have two social enterprises, uh, Appalachian Harvest Food Hub. And I'm Hannah Eichen, and I am currently in the process of opening a business, uh, a retail store for fine arts and craft supplies, with an eco-friendly emphasis. Okay. <coughs> Jesse Bowling, I'm just here to learn. There you go. Welcome. Uh, Dina Kimmel, I'm learning more. Bobby Starkey, I'm here with Dean. Uh, we're doing research. Okay. I'm Amelia Sporson. I'm with the YW Cares program out of the YWCA in Bristol. Um, we're a victim advocacy program and we're pretty new so we're trying to just learn some new things. Okay. I'm Dolores Champagne, and I'm a medical massage therapist, and I'm trying to figure out if I want to grow my business or just keep it to myself. Okay. Oh, I'm Samantha Cutter. I'm the administrative assistant with the Washington County Chamber of Commerce. Ah. I'm Susan Whitlow. I'm just here with Dolores. Okay. <laughs> Lance Lovins and um, real estate. Okay. Nita Farmer. I'm the executive vice president of the Washington County Virginia Chamber of Commerce. Sandy Ratcliffe with Virginia Community Capital, videographer, uh, whatever people want. I do. Jane, I, Jane of all trades. <laughs> but I do a lot of work with small business. <coughs> I'm Allison Burris. I'm here to learn about business plans to open the day here. Okay. So we got a pretty wide variety um, of lots, lots of different people, lots of different things. Uh, okay. So this is the welcome thing. We're going to talk about a business plan. I said this is going to be an information overload, and I really mean that. Um, behind all of this stuff are tons of other documents. So as you begin to 
understand uh, uh, the business plan process. Uh, I'm your guy. If you, if, you, if you got some questions or you need some help or you need some reference documents, I got tons of this stuff, okay? Um, we're going to go through the elements of the business plan, how you actually prepare it. We're going to talk about strategies, and we're not going to talk about financial stuff. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty wide uh, 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 topic, and uh, we wouldn't be able to do it justice uh, with all the other stuff we're talking about. Um, all right. My experience with small business is this. Uh, I, was, I had a couple of really good corporate jobs. I was living in San Diego working at General Dynamics and was on top of the world and I just didn't really like my job. And I thought, hmm, we lived in a two bedroom townhouse, my wife and I, and I said, you know, I want to do an office, but I got this big old bed in the middle of the room in the, in the other room, so I can't really use that thing for anything. So I came across these wall beds and the more I got into it, I thought, you know, I'm unhappy with my job, I'm gonna try something else. And that's what I tried. Uh, I got connected as a distributor for a, a really, really good uh, wall bed mechanism and uh, did that for 10 years. Um, and we'll talk about some of that later. This is just another version of that. These can be doubles or queens or king size beds or you know, whatever you need. And it opens up your room and it gives you a full, full use of the room. And I was in California and they don't let you do anything to your house in California. So if you want to get any more space, this is how you have to do it. Okay. Um, first, let's go through some of the hiccups um, about business plans and about starting a business. Okay. The Small Business Administration, they talk about uh, owners spending six months or less have an 80% failure rate. So planning your business for six months or less is not a good thing. Uh, they also say that those who take a year or more to plan the business is an 80% 80, 80 success rate. So planning is the deal. The business plan and the research is the deal, okay? What are the rewards? Of course, there's a possibility you can financially reward from that. It's uh, independence from uh, having to do something, do the same thing every single day. And for me, it was satisfaction. You know, I, I, was, uh, I worked really hard. Uh, owning a small business, even starting a small business, is not an easy task. And when you get ready, and what, what we're trying to do with this business plan is get you ready for when you put the key in the door and you open your door, whatever that door is, you know what it is you're supposed to be doing. And that's what the business plan is all about. Only 10% are really successful, that really develop really good, job, or really good income and expand and do all these other things. Only about 10% of the, 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 the successful businesses do that. 40% operate marginally. I was one of the 40%. What I did was I, I created a company and I created this whole new venture and I did all this stuff, but what, really what I did was I just, I, I just made my, my own job for myself. I, I created a job for myself that I thought was going to be more rewarding. Did I have uh, um, a hopes that I'd uh, hit the 10% level and I'd be really successful? Yes, I did. But a lot of circumstances happened and it turns out, I mean, I did pretty well. Um, I invested... Uh, Roughly, let's say twenty thousand dollars. I, I had a twenty thousand dollar investment that paid me between fifty and seventy-five thousand dollars every year, and then paid me as much as two hundred thousand dollars when I decided to leave. So, for a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar investment, I cashed in on that every single year. So, that's part of the financial success that you have. Um, Fifty percent fail and 25% fail in the first year. Why do they fail? First of all is research. First of all is planning. But owners and experience, you're going to start doing something that you don't fully understand. So when you do that, how do you minimize, how do you minimize this risk? How do you minimize it's by doing the research. It's by writing your business plan. It's by sitting in classes like this. 
the more of this stuff you can do, the better your chances of success. Uh, the owner's inability to make decisions or to manage tasks. When, when I, the first thing I learned in my business, uh, mine was a, a, you don't buy a wall bed every week. You buy one in your life. So every customer was a brand new customer. I didn't get any returns. It's not like a drugstore where I'm going to keep going to Walmart to get my stuff. You buy one of these, and then I got to work on a whole other customer. A and B, who knew what a wall bed was? I mean, unless you're 80 years old and you lived in Chicago or New York, you had no idea beds went up and down. Okay? So the ability to make decisions, the ability to get things done. And my philosophy, after a short period of time, was give me the worst problem you got. As soon as my feet hit the floor in the morning, I said, give me the worst one you got, because that's the one I'm going to have to solve. And that's something that you, that owners and managers sometimes don't understand. And after you're in business for a short period of time and the phone rings, it's not always about selling somebody something, it's about solving their problem. Well, you said this was going to, and you said that I thought I was getting this, or the color is, you know, you're always solving problems. So if you're not good at it, owning your own business is, is going to uh, be difficult. Uh, and maybe the most important of everything is commitment. You really got to be committed to do this. You're, some of you are maybe working in a, in a job somewhere, and now you're going to say, I'm not going to work there anymore. So you really got to be committed. And the more committed you are, the more successful you're going to be. And I was committed because my wife said, you're going to do what? So I had to make it work. Also endurance. I was working 18 hours a day. The reason I sold my business, A, I was in California and I didn't want to stay there anymore, but the reason I sold my business, I was too busy. Too busy. So my endurance, I mean, it was killing me. I had a good business going, but it was killing me. You've got to be dedicated and you've got to really want this. So the only thing you have to know when you're a business owner, the only thing you have to know is all of this. That's all you gotta know. You gotta know how to do your web page. You gotta know how to do advertising. When your computer doesn't work, you gotta figure that out. When, you know, when the truck's not working, how do, who do, who's, who's gonna repair the truck? When I run out of supplies, oh man, we got a job today and I ran out of supplies. How, how, what's gonna happen? So all you gotta do is all this stuff. You gotta be good at HR, you gotta be good at sales, you gotta be a futurist. What's my business going to look like next year? So just be aware that you're it. Wherever you're working, whatever you're doing now, if you've got a problem, there's probably someone you can call. Gladys, eh, this computer, oh, man, this is killing me. So Gladys has to go get it fixed. You just have to sit there and wait. When you're a business owner, you're Gladys. You've got to get it fixed. You've got to figure it out. And all of that stuff costs money. Can I call somebody and do a web page? Absolutely. There's tons of people around to do the web page, but for every hour, it's 100 bucks. And if you're a small business, you don't have 100 bucks to give somebody every hour. So you're going to have to figure out how to do it yourself. Is it hard? No. But it's just another thing on the list that you've got to know how to do. You know, I remember when I was in Los Angeles, we had deadlines for our, I used to advertise in the Los Angeles uh, um, Times and the Orange County Register. A little ad, three by five ad, was 500 bucks a day. And I relied on, I used to advertise on Sunday. Why? Because Sunday is the day that everybody looks at the paper. If you didn't know that, you should know that. That should be part of your research. So. I used to advertise on Sunday, and my deadline was a certain day. And if the, if the salesperson didn't show up at my office by 2 o'clock, my ad didn't get in the paper on Sunday. Now, the salesman didn't get his commission, but nobody came in my store. I can't rely on people that can't get here. So, so I had to be my advertising guy. I had to design my own ads. I had to, I had to work with the, 
the people in the downtown location that were actually in the art department, send it directly to me. I can't work through another guy. You've got to be independent. The more independent you are, the cheaper it's going to be to run your business. All right, why do we need a business plan? We've got to find out if this is even reasonable. And some of the things, we won't talk about it here too much, but if you don't know how to do a spreadsheet, you need to learn how to do it, A. And B, if you spend enough time planning this thing and figuring it out and using a pro, a pro forma profit and loss, estimated profit and loss, if you spend enough time doing that, you can figure out whether you're going to make money or not. You may not be correct, but you'll be pretty close. You'll be surprised if you spend some time spreading January, February, March, April, May, the rent, the utilities, the phone, the gas, what you're going to sell, how much you're going to sell. You'll be surprised how close you can come by doing a spreadsheet. And that is your feasibility. How many sandwiches do I need to sell every single day to... If, you, if, you have a, if you're familiar with a spreadsheet and you've got January through December and you've got the bottom, the bottom line here that says this is how much I plan to make this year, you can divide that, P, that number up into how many sandwiches do I need to sell every single day for me to meet that number. And if it doesn't look I can sell that many, what do I have to do to either to sell it or to change my plan? And you can do that on a spreadsheet. You can get pretty close. All right. This is uh, the business plan is a roadmap to figure out uh, how your operations are going to work. And just how is this, is this going to be a one-man show? Or are you going to have two people or three? Or what qualifications they got to have? Obtain how you're going to obtain capital. If you are going to borrow money to do this, you will have a business plan. Not everybody has to have a business plan. There's lots of people that start businesses that don't have a business plan. I don't recommend it, but, but you can do it. But if you're going to borrow money, you have to have it because you have to give it to somebody. And they have to say, are we going to give this person money or not? It's a guide to a successful outcome. If you plan this thing well enough, you figure out how this is going to work. And I don't just mean how it's going to work, but physically, how many rooms do I need? Do I need a truck? Do I need an old one or a new one? How big has it got to be? That's the kind of stuff we do in the planning. All right. The written, the, the, um, the simple rule, the simple rule for a business plan, the, the, the principal thing you need to take home with you is if, especially if you're going to be borrowing money, if I came to you and said, I heard that you got an inheritance and I heard that you want, you got $20,000 that you were willing to lend to somebody and we've been friends for a long time, lend it to me. Would you say, sure, uh, let me just make out the check? Or would you say, well, wait, 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 hold it. What, what are you going to do with this money? Well, I'm going to start my own business. Give me the check. Say, so, well, hold it. I got no more than that. I'm just because just you're going to start a business. Well, what kind of business? Well, I'm going to start a wall bed business. What the hell's a wall bed? And how, how, come you, how, how much money do you need? I need $20,000. Well, how do I know? What are you going to spend the $20,000 on? My point is reverse, reverse the, the, uh, the roles. If someone was coming to you to ask for money, you would be asking them a hell of a lot of questions, wouldn't you? You're not just going to give anybody money. You'd be asking them questions. What the business plan does is answer those questions so when you go to someone else, and even if it's a, a, a lender or if you're going to rent space, I didn't know. I went to look and rent some space. The guy said, give me your business plan. I said, what do you need my business plan for? Because this is a business, and I want to know what the hell you're going to do. Otherwise, I'm not going to rent it to you. Fortunately, I had a business plan, but dumb me, I didn't know. I didn't know the landlord needed that. So all these things we're talking about, all these, uh, this is a whole bunch, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of questions. Like, for example, how much does it cost to run an advertisement in the Sunday paper? If you don't know that, you need to find out. Because it's your business, and if you don't know it, who's supposed to know it? Okay? So those are the kinds of things that, as a business owner, you're going to have to figure this stuff out. 
There's a lot to it. You don't have to know everything before you start, but you need to know that you're responsible for finding out the information. All right. The business plan is a uh, written explanation. And by, by the way, when I, 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 when I was in San Diego, I sat down and I was, I was working on this business plan and I was talking to my wife and she's going, ah, oh boy. And so I got all done with my business plan and I said, okay, remember all this stuff I was talking about, this wall bed stuff? She said, yeah. And I said, here's my business plan. Read, read through it for me. So she said, okay. So she took a couple days to read through it and analyze it. And she came back to me and she said, this isn't what we talked about. This isn't what we talked about. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, this is, you change this, you change this. Well, the reason I changed is because when I was writing the business plan and saying, how is this going to work? It changes. Because you say, well, gee, I didn't think of that. Or, gee, I didn't know I needed a truck. And, gee, I didn't know I needed a advertising. She said, it, it's changed. And when I went, went back through it, I understood why. And we, we had talked about it every single day. But when she read it, it's different. So this is your way of figuring out, how is this really going to work? And it addresses the market. What's your competition? What, what makes you different from the competition? Is there anybody else? How far away are they? How big are they? How many employees do they have? You need to know this stuff. You need to know who else is doing this. Uh, when I sold, uh, my, my process in my wall bed was, I had to, uh, because they're all custom built, I had to go to everybody's house. And they said, well, geez, you know, they got this place called Murphy Bed right down the street, and they're like a third of the price. And I would say, you're absolutely right. If you want to buy a Volkswagen, that's where you go. Just like a Volkswagen did, that's where you go. You want to buy a Cadillac, you're coming to me. Because I'm going to give you a whole bunch, of, a whole different product than they're giving you. So you need to understand what, what your strengths and weaknesses are and who the competition is and what makes you different. I thought I turned you off. I'm just so important that I, I just can't turn it off. It's just, you know. There we go. Sorry. Okay. And what resources? When you're doing your business plan, you're thinking through, what am I going to need? What kind of tools? What kind of, do I need a forklift? Do I need a truck? Do I need a tractor? You know, what, what, what am I going to do? And what financial performance? How much do I expect to make? As we're talking about that spreadsheet again. You can figure this stuff out by doing your planning. Okay. We won't get in too much into the, the legal status. Uh, you can start out as a sole proprietor or an LLC, and you can change that stuff anytime you want. That's just a, a classification for the IRS, and you can change that stuff by just telling the IRS you're changing. The business plan is also going to define exactly what you're doing. Okay? And each one, of, and when you go to the library, and you go to the business section, you're going to see 45 books that say business plan on them. And you go, well, well, what's this? And they all say the same thing. The business plan is the standard document for business. It's just universal. But in the 45 books, they approach it differently. Everybody says the same thing, but it just says, they, they just say it differently. Okay? Um, some are marketing oriented. Some are uh, manufacturing oriented. Some are uh, uh, software oriented. So they have different... I'm, I'm asking you how much does it cost to advertise and how, do you need a truck and do you need this? Those are all questions. They're general questions. When you get into some of these, if you're talking about manufacturing, it's return on investment and your manufacturing costs. And, so they're all different. But basically they're made up the same way. Uh, okay. Uh, what's involved in the business plan? Uh, you're going to be telling not only yourself, but whoever's reading this thing, what your background is. What qualifies you to do this? You know, just because you decide you want to start a business, especially if you're going to borrow money, they're going to look at this thing and say, well, what kind of experience has this guy got? You know, why would I give him $50,000 to do this when he just get, you know, he's got no experience? So um, who you are and who your key people are. If you're going to have partners or you're going to have employees. Um, in my case, um, I was uh, uh, in uh, procurement and contracts 
and an administration in the aerospace and in the offshore oil business before I did this. So I thought, you know, I've worked in corporations. I, I pretty much know what I'm doing. Well, when you start doing this, you begin to say, well, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. In my case, I was talking about being a distributor and doing the installations. And my, my strength was while I was in, in administration and management, so I could figure that out. And in my, in my uh, business plan, I relied on my manufacturer, the people I was buying the product from. They had an engineering department. They had a graphics department. They had brochures. So I was relying on them to do some of that. So when I did my business plan and I was going to give it to someone to read, they could read that and say, well, he's got a whole corporation backing him up. They're not part of his company, but they're, they're committed to giving him the resources that he needs. So that was my explanation of other key, whoops, other key people. Uh, you know, what experience have you got that lends itself to this? And if you realize that you don't have a lot of experience that lends itself to this, then you need to do more research uh, and figure it out. The, uh, the other thing I talk about in my one-on-one -on -one discussions with people is we've all been in meetings. Hopefully this isn't going to be the case today. I'm just saying. We've all been in meetings where we spend an hour somewhere and we all walked out in the hallway and we said, what was that about? I know more about that than that guy did. And we've also been to meetings where we come out and say, wow, this is unbelievable. These guys really know what they're talking about. Your business plan has to be, wow, this guy's really done the research. Somebody ought to be able to read your business plan and say they have, they have done their due diligence. They've looked into this stuff. They've talked about it. They've talked about their strengths and weaknesses. In my business plan, my last chapter was, what happens if I don't make it? What do I do with all this stuff? How do I pay back the money? Well, I had a chapter in it that said, I'm dealing with some other wall bed manufacturers and they've committed to buying my stuff. So if I fail, I can still sell off my showroom stuff and all, 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 all my supplies and recoup the money. All right. Other qualifications you have, what your organization structure is, who's going to do what. Uh, it's good sometimes to put job descriptions in there. Well, I'm going to have a sales guy, and he's going to do this. I'm going to have a, a part-time uh, receptionist and bookkeeper or, you know, whatever you're going to do, you're going you're to you're gonna explain how this is going to work. And because this is a working document, at some point you're going to also want to have job descriptions about who's going to do what. What the reader is looking for is, okay, you told me about yourself. You told me what the business is. Now how is this really going to work? Who is going to be responsible for the selling? And who is going to be responsible for the accounting? Who's going to do these, these primary functions that have to be done? How is that going to be done? Okay. All right. Your business plan also talks about who you're going to sell to. Who is your customer? Okay. Is it young people, little kids? Is it teens? Is it adults? Is it seniors? Who is your customer? <clears throat> and what do they expect from you? When you are going to sell them a service or a product, what is it these people that you're going to target want from you? And then where are they? Are they in Abingdon? Are they in Southwest Virginia? Or in the Eastern United States? Where are they? And how are you going to, how are you going to reach these people? You had a, okay. Um, How do you intend to reach them? Now, this is where I go off track a little bit, and I'm going to rain on some parades here. But nearly every business plan I see, A, there's nothing in there about advertising in paper or, or uh, you know, some, they, they say, well, we're going to do web page, but we're going to do social media. So the common denominator for every small business is, I'm going to do social media. And I'm gonna, everybody in the whole world is going to know about that. As soon as I get on social media, everything, everybody's going to know. That's false. They're not going to know. You're assuming everybody's going to like your, your, uh, your, your input and spread it to all their friends. And they may not. They may not do that. A, so, so the business is saying, I'm going to use social media. 
And then my question is, okay, where's your, where's your, uh, your social media calendar? And your calendar? Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Well, if you're going to use social media, you're going to have to say something every once in a while, every week or every two weeks or once a month or once a year. You're going to have to say, okay, I sold my first unit or okay, I got a new truck or okay, I got... Where is your calendar? So saying, I'm going to use social media and I'm going to start my own business. And when you get in business, you don't use social media. How are you going to tell your people where you are and what you're going to do? How's that going to work? So if I'm reading your business plan and you're saying, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to do Instagram, I'm going to do all that stuff, then I want to see something that proves to me that you're going to do it. Can't just say it. I've got to know that you researched it. You've got to convince me that you researched it. Now, you still may not do it, but I've got to know you know what you're supposed to do. You just can't say, oh, yeah, we're going to, I've got a buddy of mine. He's a social media guy. I'm going to link up with him. We're, we're going to get this on. That ain't how it works. You actually have to do it. Okay? Good, it's, it's, this is a nonprofit example, but do you think that the United Way and their annual fundraising, you think they say, oh, you know what, let's do, let's do a, we're at 50% of our goal. Let's, let's do that tomorrow. No. They got signs in the drawer. They got press releases in the drawer months in advance. So when they hit the 50%, they go, okay, here it is. Send this out, please. They got a schedule. They got it planned. They know what they're going to say in advance. They know what their activities are going to be. That's what your social media or any other advertising has to be. And if you don't have it there and you just say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it, I, for one, I'm not going to believe you. Because I don't know that you, because you haven't said anything that you've researched it and you know what it's all about. And who's your competition? Just quickly, I had one com competitor. It was a place called Murphy Bed, and I was called Roommaker Wall Beds. I can't tell you how many people's home I went to, and I said, you can buy the Volkswagen, or you can buy the Cadillac, but let me tell you what the Cadillac comes with. Let me explain this to you. When your grandmother is coming to visit, and you lower the bed, and you go, what? And it falls on you. Grandma has got a problem. So that's one concern. That's my competition. You can't stand under their bed when you're lowering it. You've got to get out of the way. On mine, I would just, if you let go of it, it stops. I used to go to, I used to, go to home shows. In Los Angeles has humongous home shows, humongous. And we were always there together. He was down the row, and I, was in, I had a big booth. He had a big, big, big booth, and everybody said, what's the difference between yours and his? I said, when you look at his booth, has he got a desk in front of his bed where he sits? And I, he said, yeah. And I said, why do you think he does that? As I'm up lower in my bed and stopping and letting go and talking to someone, I said, his bed can't do this for three days full without hurting somebody. Mine can. So he doesn't even try. He says, it'll work when it has to. But safety was a big deal for me. I mean, the, the uh, solid oak panels that I had on the front of that bed had to weigh 300 pounds at a, at, a, at, a, at a minimum, plus the mattress and all that stuff. So knowing your competition is a big deal. And maybe you're better, or maybe you're cheaper, or maybe you're faster. Who knows? But you need to know who else is out there competing for the same customer. And what are they doing? Are they having a small ad in the paper or a big ad in the paper? Do you see their social media stuff or don't you? What are they doing that, 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 that can help you, help you sell your product? All right. The business plan is a, whoops, sorry. The business plan is a, is a, a written document of what your, what your goals and objectives are. You're going to start this business and you've got to convince somebody why. Why am I doing this? And trust me, uh, after about the first six months, you're going to say, why did I do this? Okay? It's not easy. And what am I, whoops, I did that again. I did that wrong again. Whoops. Okay. What are my strategies? How am I going to process this stuff? Where am I going? Where am I going? I'm starting my business and I expect to get here. 
And how am I going to get there? What's my strategy for getting there? How am I going to do that? And then it's a written explanation of what your business environment is going to be all about. You know, back in the 2005 when we had an economy that wasn't so good, the phone wasn't ringing at the Chamber of Commerce saying, hey, man, can you help me start a business? Because nobody had any money. They, they weren't starting businesses. And the ones that were were because they lost their job and they wanted to paint houses or wash windows or cut grass because they, they had to have some income. The business plan is a means to explain what you're doing, like I did to my wife. I gave her the business plan and she looked over and said, oh boy, we got to talk. Okay, so it's good to have other people read your business plan. You know, uh, you, there's a, uh, is anybody here involved in the, in the Washington County Business Challenge? Okay, so uh, at the end of your journey here with the business challenge, someone like me or somebody else is going to read your business plan, and they're going to grade your business plan. So it better be good. Probably won't be me, but it better be good. And you're going to explain it to your, to your bank. Remember I said you got $20,000. Hey, can I have that? You're going to ask me a hell of a lot of questions before you give it to me. Well, that's what the bank does. They want to be sure you're going to get your money back. And when you do your spreadsheet, January, February, March, April, December, and your uh, uh, income and expense, and you get to the bottom line of how much I'm going to take out of this business, if I'm looking at that and saying, well, let's see, his, he's borrowed $50,000 and his, his uh, monthly payment's $1,000, and at the bottom, it looks like he's going to make $1,200 and saying, that's only a $200 cushion. Do we want to take that chance on this business? Because there's not, if he hiccups or he gets sick for a couple of weeks, he can't catch up on his payments. So that's why the spreadsheet, and that's why they're looking at all this stuff. It's all about, and oh, by the way, it isn't Joe's lawn service that borrows the money. It's Joe. So if you're, that bank, after, after you get the money, the bank don't care if you're in business or not. Just send me the money. Well, I don't care how you get it. Okay. And it's also a guide. The business plan is a guide. And it's a living document, so it, it changes. You know, things change. Uh, but it's a, it's a living, uh, working measure of your performance. You say in your business plan, in the first year you're going to do this, that, and the other thing, then you've got to go back and say, well, did I actually do that stuff? You know, and if I didn't do that, why, why didn't I? So it's not only a, a uh, uh, the performance is all internal. I mean, most people don't. Once you get your loan and once you start your business, you're on your own. Nobody cares about your business plan. They assume that you've looked through this thing and you've figured it out. And I'll go back to the, one of the first slides that you know, what is it, 20% fail in the first year. So people assume once you've, you know, you looked at the business plan, I guess you know what you're doing, you know, and you're committed, so, you know, don't listen to me. And then 12 months later, you're out of business, you still owe the money, and now you're in a worse spot than you were. So measuring how you're doing and keeping track of that stuff. And the one thing that, that, that I need to say do, doing this business plan thing, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I didn't even realize it until after I sold my business and I was out of there. At some time, you have to sit on the curb across the street, look at your, your enterprise and say, what are they doing in there? When I started my business, phones started ringing, problems started happening, deliveries had to happen, I had to talk to the cabinet shop, and I had to tell them about the handles and the hinges and the stain and this and that. But I never took the time to say, is this guy do, got, a, got it going on? What does he need to do better? So I was looking at the trees, and sometimes you've got to just step back and look at the whole forest and say, am I doing the right thing here? And who else would know better than you guys? Because it's your business, right? So every once in a while, you've got to say, you know, put the phone down a second. Let's look at the whole concept. What should I be doing differently? Am I trying to sell stuff with low margin? 
that I should be selling, spending my time selling with the high margin? You know, I remember, I remember a lady from a restaurant called me and said, could you come over and chat with me a little bit? And I said, okay, get your financials together and give me your, your profit and loss and stuff. And on the profit and loss, she had wine. She had like $200 for the whole year. And I said, what is this? She said, well, that's wine. And I said, so you have three bottles of wine in your refrigerator that you never used, that you have to take care of? She goes, well, yeah, sort of. We don't really. I said, well, don't sell wine anymore. I mean, there's stuff like that that, you know, I, I, I want to be a service to my customer. If they want a glass of wine, I want to give it to them. But, you know, you got a bottle of six-month-old Chardonnay in there. It's, you know, you may as well give them water. But that's the kind of thing you spend your time doing the things that make the difference. I had a guy come in and say, I want to I open up an automobile repair shop. And I said, okay, cool. What, do you, what can you do? Oh, man, I can do body work. I can do tires. I can do paint. I can do brakes, I can, I can rebuild engines, I can do interiors. And I said, unless you're Bill Gatton and you got a 50,000 square foot shop, you ain't doing all that. Because A, you can't afford the tools, and B, you don't have the time. So let's talk about what you can make the most money on in the least amount of time. And then next year, we take on another product. And, next year, and then 10 years from now, you're Bill Gatton. But right now, you can't do the Bill Gatton thing. You don't have the time or the inclination or the money. So you got to focus. <clears throat> and managing the business is not just answering the phone. It's looking at your, uh, and oh, by the way, we're not, we're not going to talk about it here, but we should talk about it. If you are not planning to use an electronic accounting system, you have rocks in your head. <laughs> you cannot have a shoebox full of receipts and expect to figure out what the heck you're doing. Okay? Let's just get it out there. If, 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 if that's a problem for you, then you're in the wrong room. You should not be thinking about this. Simple as that. And there's a million reasons why. All right. Your plan is going to answer some questions. Where do you want to go? What are your goals and objectives? Your plan is going to say, not only who am I and what am I doing and what are my job descriptions going to be and who else is going to help me and what my organization chart is and who my competition is, but it's also going to let you know where the heck am I going with this thing? What are, where do I expect to be in 10 years? And how are we going to get there? We talked about the strategy before. How are we going to, how are we going to make this thing work for the next 10 years? We said this is a, a living document. If the, the things are going to change. The, almost the day you turn the key and open your door, something's going to be different. It just is. You've got to be light on your feet. You've got to be self-sufficient. And, and if for no other reason to be self-sufficient is because you can't afford not to be. Everybody, there's services everywhere. But you have to pay for them unless you know how to do them yourself. The business objectives, the strategies. Where are we going and what do we have to do to get there? You know, when I'm doing a strategic plan for a nonprofit, I say, you're here and you want to go here. Certain things have to happen for you to reach your goal. You can't, if your goal is one year out or two years out, let's say it's two years out, you can't wait to December the second year and say, okay, now what do we got to do to get this done? You've got to be working every single week to figure out what am I got to, am I on my trajectory? That's what your business plan helps. It doesn't have to be in your business plan, but it helps you sort out how do I get there? What should I be thinking about? Okay. And what are we going to do? Where, where, where are we going? Okay. Nobody's asking any questions here? Am I over? Just an over, this is a, uh, information overload, isn't it? This is a lot of stuff coming at you. Okay, well, business plan is a lot of words, and it's way more thought, way more thought. And you may have, and oh, by the way, uh, if I've uh, convinced you to do something else with your time instead of start a business, this process doesn't matter if you're a wallpaper hanger, a 
garage mechanic or an engineer. This is the process. So if you're, if you're doing a spreadsheet and you get down to the bottom corner and say, man, I can't sell that many sandwiches. I just can't do it. So I say, okay, throw it away and start another idea. Maybe there's a spin-off idea. Or maybe there's a partnership that you can, you, you, you can look around town and say, yeah, I've been doing all this thinking and these guys are doing some stuff and maybe I could add to what they're doing. I cannot tell you, I just cannot tell you how many days, if someone walked into my, I, I had a retail store, I had a showroom that had those wall beds in it, and it was about 3,000 square feet. And somebody walked in on a Tuesday afternoon and sat down and said, uh, are you interested in selling your business? I cannot tell you how many times I'd have said, hell yes, sit down. And there were other days I'd have said, man, no, I'm, not, you know, I'm not ready yet. But I can tell you, there's days when you say, hell yes, sit down. And eventually that's what I did. My business, I told you my business was really good and I was working 18 hours a day. And I told my wife, I said, we need to, we need to open another store. She said, why would you do that? I said, Abe, so I can hire more people to help me do some of this stuff. So they could run the store, but they could also do some designs and some of the home visits and take some of the, take some of the heat off. And she said, well, okay, uh, how long do you think you're going to be staying in California? And I said, well, I, I don't know, another four or five years. And she said, let's see if I got this straight. You're, gonna, you're already killing yourself. You're going to kill yourself exponentially for the next four or five years. And then you're going to leave? And I said, well, yeah. And she said, why don't we sell the business now and let somebody else do all that? We can get out of here. And I said, click. The light went, the little light bulb went, boing. I said, now there's an idea. So we did. All right. Your business plan is going to talk about who your customers are and how you're going to reach them. Who's the target group? You know, uh, in my case, when I was in California, almost everybody was a target group. It didn't matter who they were because you can't do anything. You can't hardly even put vinyl windows in your house in California without getting the governor's approval. It's nuts. So almost anybody was in my target. I just had to, when I started, to, when I st and, and this is important to you too. When I started with this uh, corporation as their distributor, they said, you're going to have to come out to Minneapolis. They were in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I said, man, I don't want to spend 600 bucks to go out there. And he said, yeah, then you can't do it. If you don't have 600 bucks, then we don't want you as a distributor. And I said, well, I guess you're right. So I went out there. And he said, the first thing he said to me, he says, we need pioneers. We need pioneers for this product. And I said, what? He said, nobody knows what a wall bed is. Some people know what a Murphy bed is, but most people don't even know what a Murphy bed is. So first you've got to convince them of what, you've got to teach them what it is, and then convince them that they need it. So you've got to be the pioneer to get out there and really get into the trenches. I mean, this is a, and oh, by the way, once you sell one of these, your customer's not coming back. They already got the wall bed. It's not like a drugstore or going to Walmart every week. No, you sell one of these and you're done. So now you've got to work on a whole new client. Okay, customers, size and locations, how are you going to reach them? And we talked about that social media thing. Social media is a buzzword. It's a buzzword. It doesn't happen. And you got to know about your competition. I told you, I can't tell you how many times I sat down in someone's living room and I, and I gave them their design and I had to sit there and they said, well, why, why, why would I spend 5000 when I can spend three? And I said, okay, let's talk about that. You know, and I, I said, have you ever seen this, these Murphy beds? I got them little trampoline springs. You know, they got those things that help, help the bed. Mine are car springs, like the ones you have in your car, those great big coil things. I said, now, which one of these do you think is going to fail first? The big car spring that's, that takes 500,000 miles in the front of your car or that little trampoline spring? Which, which one do you think is going to work? I mean, you don't need to be an engineer. So who's your competition? Who are they? You need to get to know them. You need to get to know their product. And your research, that's part of your research. Because in your business plan, you're going to have to talk about who is my competition and what makes me different. Okay, I use, I use Angus beef, or my burgers are twice as big, or my buns are 
whatever, or my pickles, or you know, whatever. And how are they doing? Are they successful? How many locations do they have? How much money, how many employees do they have? And why are you different? That's the critical one. Why are you different? Well, if you're going to order from this guy, it's going to take you six weeks. You order from me, I'll have it for you next week. Well, gee, Christmas is coming. I guess my people are coming. I guess I've got to get this bed in there. So, yeah, I, you know, if, this, if you can do it in a week, let's do it. All right. And it also talks about your operating environment, how all that's going to work. Here is a... Uh, sort of a, a, a business plan schedule. Um, that's not to say you've got you to live to it, but it tells you these are some of the things that have to go on. In my case, I had to get permits. I had to get a permit to get the sign. That's another thing I'll tell you about. So I'm, I, I'm pretty damn proud of my business plan when I got it done. You know, my, my wife gave me some heat for it, but... I was pretty damn proud of it. And after about a year or a year and a half, I went back and looked at it again. I updated it. And I put, you know, where I had my 12-month projections, I went back and laid in the real numbers. And I was pretty close. I, I, was, I, was, it was, I was scared how close I was. One of the things that I didn't do is I'm in a, I'm in a, a, a you know, strip center. And... Uh, uh, I got my display in there, and I ran a few ads in the paper, and I said, I'm going to put a banner up on the front of the building there so when people drive by, they know what the heck I'm doing because you can't see from the street when you're looking in the windows. A, and B, in my business plan, I, I, I was going to do one of those metal signs, little round metal signs with the lights in the back and the big plastic front on them with a graphic on it, five, six hundred bucks. And so... Uh, Landlord comes in and says, well, when are you going to get your sign? You're, I don't know if I want you to keep this thing up here. And he said, I said, well, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to get one of those metal things with the plastic front sign. He said, no, you're not. I said, I'm not? He said, no. He said, you need to look at your lease. Everybody in the front of this plaza has got the same kind of sign. Individual letters with lights in the back. So they light up. So my budget for my sign, because I didn't do my research, went from 500 bucks to one-third of my investment, 5,000 bucks. And then I said, well, I'll just leave this banner up here for a little while. I'll kind of wimp, wimp my way through it. I said, well, okay, okay, I, I got it. Let, let me sell a few more wall bats. And then the sign police came along and said, you know, uh, can't do that. I said, well, you look, I'm a new business. I'm, I'm serious, sign police. It's a new business. And they said, uh, okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. Uh, every day you want to leave that up there, it's 500 bucks penalty. So I, I, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. I had to take the damn sign down, and I had to spend the 5,000 bucks and get my other sign. I didn't have a choice. Just to show you that I missed it. You know, I, I, I made an assumption on my business plan, and it cost me... $4,500 more than it should have. I can tell you about a guy who went to the Small Business Administration. He was going to get one of them one-page $10,000 loans. No business plan. Guy's a caterer. Wants to uh, move into a little restaurant that's vacant. Use that as, this, yeah, it'll be a restaurant, but it's really for catering. He said, if I get a couple you know, people in here to eat lunch or something, that's fine, but it's for catering. I want the equipment and I want the space. So he goes to the SBA, gets a $10,000 loan with no business plan, calls me up and says, hey, can you help me out? I said, well, what's the problem? He said, well, I got a $10,000 loan. I said, okay, good. I said, you got a business plan? He said, no. I said, what's the problem? He said, well, Bristol, Virginia Utilities wants $7,000 for a deposit for my electric. And he said, well, where do I talk to the gas company? That's going to be another $7,000. And I said, did you do the business plan? He said, no. And I said, so I said, let me call BT, uh, uh, BVU and ask them if there's something we can do. And I said, why the hell would it be $7,000 for a uh, deposit? 
he says, the guy, the, the, the guy said, I'm not going to use anywhere near that much electricity. So when I talked to the guy at BVU, he said, yes, he is. That building's 35 years old. We know how much he's going to spend on electricity, no matter what he does in there. We got the records. So he didn't move into the restaurant because he, he, he had all his money budgeted for his equipment, his pots and pans and this and that, carts and all that stuff. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay, yeah. So anyway, he didn't do that. He, he said, oh, I guess I'm going to have to run this out of my basement, which is what he did, I think, if he, if he did it at all. So this is just sort of a schedule as to what, what, what do I got to do to get this thing done and get my business uh, uh, running? Will everybody do a schedule like that? No, but you should. All right, so now we're going to get into business plan is like, is like chapters of a book, okay? Typically, everybody looks at your, your uh, executive summary. If you're going to apply somewhere for loans or something, they're going to read the, the executive summary and say, do we, do we do this or don't we? Some banks will lend to restaurants, some won't. Some banks will lend to this, and they, you know, some won't. So they'll, they're going to read the executive summary and say, what is this guy's plan? And if we're interested, then we'll get into the details. Details is business description, products and services, management and operations. These are things we've talked about. Management and operations, marketing analysis and strategy, who the competition is, and the location. And your financial projections. We won't talk about the financial projections, but you're going to have to do some of those things. And if you, just like the Electronic accounting, if you don't know how to use spreadsheets, you got to learn, period. And then the strategies and tactics to get all this done. All right, executive summary is normally a couple pages, summarizes the whole project, what you're going to do, how much you're going to need, and where you expect to go with your business, okay? And if you're not I said before, you've been to meetings where you've walked out of here and said, I, I don't know, I, I know more about that than that guy does. And you've walked out of meetings and said, wow, this is really impressive. This is where you have to be really impressive. People reading your document that you need something from, a landlord or a banker, or if you're going to be a distributor for somebody, uh, or you're going to carry their product, you know, let's say you're a t-shirt guy, you know, you're going to be ordering t-shirts from some, someplace. They're going to want to see your business plan. And I can just say, well, yeah, well, you know, because we don't know if we're going to get paid. So you're, this is where the, the, the reader begins to read your document and say, is this worth my effort or not? And the executive summary says, is this worth my effort to read the rest of this 20 pages or should I just throw it away? Okay, and normally your executive summary, the first page, is the last thing you do because it summarizes all your research and everything you've thought about. So now that you're smarter now than you were then, you're smarter now, now I can write an executive summary that details what I'm doing because now I know what I'm doing because I've done the business plan. So that's normally the last thing you do. Business description. What's the business name? What type of business is it? T-shirts or lawn service or painter or mechanic or you know whatever. Why are you doing this? Because I lost my job or because I've always wanted to do this or, uh, you know, I'm retired now and I want to do something else or, you know, whatever it is. Why are you going to do this? What business are you in and what do you stand for? What is the business and, you know, because uh, you're higher quality, quicker service? What do you stand for? You know, what are your goals and objectives? What industry are you in and what are your trends? These are the kinds of things. What, what is happening out in the economy? What is happening in the, in the world around us um, that sets up what the trends are? You know, now the trends are what? They're, they're uh, 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 cybersecurity, there's AI, there's all kinds of, you know, there's video stuff, there's all kinds of things going on that weren't going on 10 years ago. So this, that, that's the trend. And it, all the industries and businesses are going to need that stuff. If there's no need for a product, then why do it? So what is the need out there in the community? 
why are you doing this and what hole are you going to fill? Who needs your product? In my case, as far as I was concerned, almost everybody in California needed my product because their houses are just, they're all cut up and you can't do anything with them. And what do you have to do to be successful? That's what the business description is about. Goals and objectives, milestones. You know, you hope to be doing this in six months. You hope to have three more employees in six months. You've got to monitor that. All right, products and services. What are they? What do you sell? What service do you render? Who needs that service? Okay, you've got to spell out. You know, in my case, it wasn't just beds. It wasn't just mattresses. It was the whole concept. It was different. Was I in competition with the mattress companies and all that stuff? Sort of, but not really. I was more in competition with the construction people, the people who put additions on your house. Because with my product, you didn't need all that. You know, I come in in the morning and I go home at night and you got a whole other room in your house. You just flip the bed out of the way. <clears throat> What's your pricing strategy? You know, if, you're, if your sandwich is a dollar and a half more than Subway's, why? The reader is going to want to know why and you're going to want to justify it in your own mind. And now the other thing, that one of the hardest things for a business owner to do is pricing. And I knew that, and I worked on it, but I didn't get good at it until after I sold my business and I was out of there. The other people that I dealt with, there was a guy in Phoenix, and there was a guy in San Francisco that did exactly the same thing I did, and we networked all the time. And they said, man, you just don't charge enough for your product. You just don't charge enough. They're selling half of the product that I was selling, and they're making twice as much. And they said, you're working too hard, man. Raise your prices. And I never did. And I realized that, you know, and, you know, I'd get designers coming in and say, hey, well, what kind of cut can I get on your product? And I tried to work on a little bit, and then finally I, I would say, look, and, and, and customers, you know, the different customers would come in and try to negotiate with you and say, look, for me to stay in this building to do what I got to do, I got to make this much money on this unit. Now, if you're a designer and you can sell it to your customer, add another 30% or 40%, do it. I'm good. But I got to make what I got to make or else I can't stay here. So pricing is a big deal. And you, you, you want to sell to everybody that walks in the door, but sometimes you can't. And it, it, that was a hard lesson for me to learn because... My attitude was if you walk in the door, you're walking out of here with a wall bed, period. I'm going to convince the hell out of you when you're here. But it didn't always work that way. All right, what, uh, what methods do you use to, do, to determine your pricing? And, uh, you know, do you have discounts? How are you, how are you going to structure discounts? My manufacturer used to have a, 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 you know, a wall bed sale every uh, six months or something, and, or maybe once a year, and so we would advertise that and say, you know, 20% off or whatever it was. And then what margins are you going to make? And the margin is, if you don't know, is you make your product for this much and you sell it for this much, and this margin is what you've got to work with. It's your profit and your overhead and your this's and your that's. You know, you buy a T-shirt for a dollar, you sell it for five dollars, margin is four dollars, but it doesn't go in your pocket. You've got to pay your bills with it. Okay, so what is the margins? Management and operations, who are the key managers? We talked about what, what is your resume, what are you qualified to do? Um, your bankers, you know, you're all, everybody's like, I'm going to try to get a loan from this bank and I hope they give me the money. And stuff. The bankers, the lawyers, uh, all those people are part of your team. And so if you're going to do an organization structure, you say, well, who's, who's representing your company? If you've got a lawyer, put the lawyer on there. If you've got a banker, put the banker on there. If you've got a, in my case, you had a cabinet shop, put the cabinet shop on there. Those are all part of the team. They may not participate every day, but they're part of your, your organization. If you've got problems, those are people you can go to. And it's nice to see that stuff on an on a, uh, you know, organization chart, say, you know, these, these are all part of my team it means you recognize that these guys are helpful to you and you can go to them for guidance. We talked about what the owner's qualifications are, work experience, administrative, uh, any partnerships. Um, 
under that it should say, and oh, by the way, I learned how to use Quicken, or I learned how to use QuickBooks. What are your personnel going to be? What's your legal structure? What's your insurance? Uh, you can get insurance for your business or your product uh, or your facility, which you should. And you can, if you have life insurance, you can also get an umbrella policy that's relatively cheap. So when, if someone slips and falls on your sidewalk and they exceed your million dollar policy, if you have an umbrella policy with a, with a life insurance company, they'll cover whatever's left over and above that. So you still remain whole. So if you're talking to insurance companies and stuff, if you have life insurance, that's a way to get some fairly cheap, and you may never use it, but it's fairly cheap. Uh, accounting systems, we talked about that. Um, you can have an accountant, you can have somebody do your books for you. What is it, 25, 50, 75 bucks an hour? If you got the money, go for it. If you don't, learn how to use QuickBooks or learn how to use Quicken. They're not that hard to learn and there's classes everywhere. There's even classes online. Market analysis and strategy. Who's your market? How are you going to serve them? Who's the competitors? We've talked about that. How does your product and service differ from theirs? Uh, and trust me, when I'm in those home shows in California, there's some serious people coming through there, and they want to know, how is you different from them? You know, and I had solid oak cabinets, and they had those plastic laminate, you know, and they were, you know, I said, just, man, you just got to look at the difference. That's what they do, and this is what I do. What's your elevator pitch like when you're talking to somebody about your business? You got three minutes, tell me everything you need to know about, about the business. Get their interest. How's that gonna work? Mouth to mouth is the cheapest and best and fastest way to get business. It just is. When I went to these home shows, there was thousands and thousands of people coming through that I never sold any wall beds at any home show. None, zero. And I did it for 10 years, never once. And I used to go to two home shows a, a year. But after that, people said, yeah, I saw this. The guy told me about it, and I saw your ad in the paper. I thought, what the heck? I'll come down here and look at it. And a lot of times, I sold them. What media are you going to use? Ah, social. I'm going to use social media. That's easy. Anybody can do it. What type of publicity? Are you going to join the Chamber of Commerce? Yes. Yes. There's... The Chamber of Commerce is like a health club. If you don't go there and use it, it's of no value. But there is value. And networking is one of the, we said mouth to, uh, word of mouth, networking is where it's at. I'm in your way, aren't I? Um, networking is where it's at. Do you need a sales force? You're going to do it yourself. Can you afford the sales force? That's another thing. Uh, we talk about a um, guy who paints houses. Good house painter, good house painter. Gets a job, takes two or three weeks to paint a house, does an excellent job. Then he finishes the job, puts his stuff away, goes home, and then he looks for another paint job. Takes him a week to get the paint job, or two weeks. So that's two weeks every month or every five weeks He's not getting a paycheck because he's the painter and the salesperson. So when he's painting, he's not selling, and when he's selling, he's not painting. So, or you're a lawn service guy. There's three inches of snow out in the yard, not cutting grass today. So what do we do in the wintertime? Or if you're a snowmobile guy, what do you do in the summertime? You got you to sort that out. How is this going to work? What other product am I going to take on? So, and then if you're a jewelry store, you don't do anything all year until February, and then you don't do anything all year again until December. Nobody buys stuff in June, unless it's for a wedding or something. They buy it for Christmas. They buy it for Valentine's Day. So in your, all your downtime, how's that going to work? When you do your spreadsheet, income and expense, profit or loss, you list all your account, you spread it out monthly, there's going to be months that you won't sell anything. What are you going to do 
during those months. What else can you do? Think it through. What else can you do? Because you need a paycheck every week. What kind of promotions can you do? So all has, all has to do with uh, marketing and analysis. What customer experience would you have? What is, how are you going to treat your customer differently than somebody else is? In my case, I went to their house. I went to every single customer's house, and I measured their room. Because I, a lot of people don't know how to read a tape measure. And I couldn't build a unit and get out to their house and say, oh, wait a minute, I can't get it in here. And trust me, that's happened a few times. I had to take windows out so I could take the cabinets in the window. Uh, what are the pros and cons of a location? When you're looking, if you're going to have a storefront, you're going to do a dress shop, you're going to do something that's going to have a, st uh, a, a storefront, don't just say, that's the one I want. Because it may cost too much, it may be too big, it may, may be no parking. So you always got to have a fallback position, A, B, and C. You should have at least three different locations for whatever you're doing. Competition, we talked about the who's the competitors, are they direct competitors? How, how are they doing? What can you learn from them? I learned that they build cheap stuff and I build the expensive stuff. And that's all I needed to know about them. I knew that my stuff was safe for grandma and theirs wasn't. So what did I sell? I sold safety and quality. And they couldn't touch me on that because they knew they couldn't do it. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Everybody has strengths, everybody has weaknesses, and your business is going to have the same. What are those? Identify them so you can address those things. If someone asks you a question when they walk in your store, can you, can you do this? Well, my answer, my answer was always, can you do this? And the answer was always yes. Whatever, whatever you ask, it's always yes. The reason? There were so many subcontractors around me, I could get anybody to do anything I needed as long as I got the contract for them. All right, competitive analysis. These are some of the items that you want to analyze between the various different companies, if you're into doing that. The location. We got one real estate guy here. He says location, 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 right? That's what it's all about. Uh, I happened to be, I was in a what looked like a strip center but it was a business park. Business park, like, you know, you have an office door and a garage door, and you have a little office area, and a shop is back behind you, just empty space. That's what the park I was in. But the front row looked like a strip mall. And so my rent, I was able to get the rent. It was like uh, almost 60% uh, of what a strip mall would cost. And as you drove by, you'd think it was a strip mall. So I happened to luck out, and I saved a lot of money on rent because of that. But you're going, to need to, you're going to need to have several different locations. How do I know what's, how do I know, if I ask you how much traffic goes by this location you're thinking about, how, how would you tell me that? I shouldn't have to know that. You should have to know that, right? You're going to have a store. How many, how many people drive by here? Because if I go into the bank, I'm going to say, we've got 250,000 people drive in front of my store every single day. How do you find that out? You call Ta uh, 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 Tanya at the city, and she says, I can help you with that. The city, you ever see, you go across some little rubber things across the street, that's what they're doing. They're, they're calculating how many cars come through here. So if you need to know that stuff, you need to know statistical stuff. The city normally, has, either the city or the county, has that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that stuff's readily available now. Um, is it critical for your business plan? No, but it could be. You know, if you're negotiating with a landlord and you say, well, yeah, you know, only got 75 cars come through here and you're going to charge me $10 a square foot? This, guy, this guy's got 250,000 cars coming through, he's going to charge me half of that. What's the deal? So you just got to know this stuff. That's part of the research. <sighs> Am I going to buy new equipment? Or am I going to buy used equipment? If I'm going to buy new, wh wh why do I need to buy new? Why can't I buy used? 
That's part of the analysis. And there's some things you just don't want used, you know. We talked about the traffic exposure, access. Is there a driveway there? I mean, you've driven down streets when you, you want to turn into the restaurant there and there's no place to turn. You've got to go way down there and come back. That's an inconvenience. So that, all that stuff's got to be looked at in terms of locating where you want to be. Financial projections, we won't discuss those. That's, uh, I'll just tell you that um, if you are familiar with spreadsheets, I can email anybody a pre-designed spreadsheet. So when you put a number in the column, it adds it all up for you all over the place, how, how that works. I, I can email you that. It's income and expense. And you list all your expense accounts. And I mean all of them. All of them. Even your sign that costs you $4,500 more than it should. Okay? You got to list them all. And in the income, and the more detail you are, the absolute more detail you are, the closer you're going to be. You'd be amazed. And in your income, the more detail you make. I'm going to sell sandwiches and potato chips and Coke and this and that and this and that. Each one of those has a price point. You want to list as many of those things as you can list. Because when you put a value in there, you're going to get closer and closer and closer to, the, to your estimate. And any of this documentation... I got tons of this stuff that's pages and pages and pages of business plan stuff. Okay, so if anybody's interested, you got my business card. Did you get a business card? You got my business card, and uh, just email me, and I will stand back because I'm going to send you some stuff. Okay? <laughs> All right, this is uh, revenue, expenses. Strategic uh, planning here, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? What are the opportunities? That's what that stands for. Let's see. Does everyone know what a SWOT is? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay? So when you're good at something, make the list. When you're bad at something, like in my case, I thought I was going to... I thought I was going to purchase my cabinets, purchase my bed, purchase my mattresses from the manufacturer. I said, how hard is this? You go to the catalog, say, give me this, this, this. Shows up on an 18-wheeler. I take it out to the house, and boom, I put it in. Until I realized I was paying three times as much for the cabinets as I should. So I said, wait a second. So then I said, I'm going to go to the local cabinet shops and cut a deal with these guys and have them build my cabinets. I'm going to negotiate a price with them, tell them what I want to do, give them some configurations, say, I'm going to send you a drawing, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know, you just got to build it. I, I was building custom cabinets for about half of what I was getting these plastic laminates from. The plastic laminates they sent me were pretty good, but they weren't custom cabinets. So I went from being a wall bed owner to being a cabinet shop guy. I got into this business thinking I was going to install wall beds, and I turned out I was a cabinet maker, and I didn't even know it. So what did I have to do? My strengths and my weaknesses. My weakness was, I don't know diddly about a cabinet. I know they're in the kitchen, I, drawers and stuff, I didn't know. Now I are one, so now I got to, Come up with configurations. I got to know what crown molding is. I got to know the handles. I got to know different species of wood. I got to know what the color stains they were. I need to know that plywood stains different than solid wood. I need. To, I got to know all this stuff in like a week. So, I was dedicated and I was motivated. I figured it out. Pardon me. Yeah. Oh, SWAT is for threats. Yeah, opportunities might be, uh, like in my case, I was in San Diego, and there was only one other wall bed place. I thought, this is an opportunity. Not like gas stations or convenience stores on every corner. There's just one guy in this whole county. What if there was two? Then I had a 50% chance of getting every single customer. That was an opportunity. The threat, there's different kinds of threats. In my case, 
they weren't too, too big a deal, but there are threats like, well, there's licensing required, and maybe you're going to start your business and they're not going to give you the license. Or you need to have a certain degree to do this stuff and you don't have it. You know, so there's threats. And so you need to identify what are the economy's a threat. If the economy goes sour, like in 2004 or 5, nobody was starting a business. They just weren't. Objectives, are they achievable or aren't they? Don't set your sights too high. Don't say, I'm going to triple my business in 12 months. That ain't going to happen. And you say, I'm going to start advertising like crazy. The perfect example of that is look at Coca-Cola. Almost every room you walk into, there's Coca-Cola somewhere. Or Nike. Do you think Nike spends $100 on a pair of sneakers? They probably cost $5. Because the other $95 is going to Michael Jordan and to the football players and the basketball players. You can't spread that thing all over the world on a 10% margin. You can't. But that's how they're doing it. Their, their name is everywhere. Every football jersey's got a little check mark on it. Every little hat's got a, It's everywhere. Just like Coca-Cola. It's everywhere. So your Coca-Cola, you spend a dollar for it, probably costs three cents. The other 97 cents is going on billboards and football stadiums and all that. So advertising, uh, you don't just run an ad and say, okay, I'm, I'm ready. It's got to be every single week, every this. That's why I talked about a social media schedule. It's got to be all the time. It's, you, you, you don't stop. Measure your uh, key indicators, your key issues. Website. These are kind of things that you're going to set up and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a website. And if you don't know how to do a website, you need to learn. They're not hard to do. They're, you need to learn. They're just not hard to do. And you can't afford, when you're a small business, you just can't afford somebody to do that for you. Early on, we had that list of uh, business owner wears a lot of hats. That's one of them. Okay, what are my sales going to be? What are my objectives? Where's my break-even point? Getting the uh, keys to success are determination, how quickly you can get your product, the uniqueness of your product, how well you're... It's, it's, it, it's, uh, I never wanted to have any salespeople in my organization because I was the sales guy. When they said, how big a springs you used? I was the guy who knew that stuff. What kind of handles? Now, we don't use regular hinges. We use European hinges. You can snap the door right off if you want to clean in there and snap it back on. I was the guy who knew all that stuff. And you're going to be the guy who knows all that stuff, too. So when you get somebody else to be your salesperson, they're not going to know as much as you unless you train them and train them and train them. And about the time you get them trained, they're going to go somewhere else. Ta-da! Okay, gang. Any questions? Was it fun? Are we? I Shoot. Oh, I and listen. I'm the answer man. I'm hoping that you write your business plan before you start your business. Yeah, but, that, but, but, that's but, if, but, but if but if that's history already, yeah. if that's history already, then you take it a piece at a time. Remember, I, I, I said it's, it's like a chapter of a book. Yep. And so you can, you, can, you can write a section, mm -hmm. and maybe somebody else can write a section, mm -hmm. if you've if you got more than one person in it, or you just take one a month or something, and you, you know, the, 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 it, it, the business plan is what am I going to do, and how am I going to do it, and it, it forces you to do the research to understand more about what you're doing. And try, even, though, even though you're in business, there's a lot of stuff you already know, okay, that, that you can kind of cruise right on through. Especially if you're not, not going to look for financing or you, know, you just want to do it so you can plan. There's some of these things you can skip right over. But there's some things, and, and there's some things that you can do that you don't, it does, doesn't require a whole three or four page write-up. You know, you can just say locations, for example. Say, well, these are the ones I think 
because you know where they are and what they're doing, or, or customer, or who's my market, or how am I going to reach them. Some of that stuff you can just make a business plan is all about lists. And um, let's, take, let's take example. Let, let's, let's take example. Um, uh, uh, who's my market? Um, churches, schools, cities, um, neighborhoods. Let's, let's take five. Okay, let's start with churches. So we're going to make a list. You're going to do your business plan. Your list is going to have five things on it, those things I, that I just said. Churches is number one. Which churches? Oh, what do you mean? Well, there's Baptist, and there's Catholic, and there's this. and this. Which churches? Well, all the churches. We'll make a list. So make a list of all the churches. And then when you get the list, you say, okay, where are those churches? What's their address? Who do I have to call? If I'm going to get your business, who do I have to call? So now you're taking this list and make it a little bigger. Make it a little, and we're still talking about churches here. Okay? And then when, you're, when you get them all, you put a little box next to each one of them. And you say, I went to First Baptist today. They're not going to buy my product. I went to First Catholic today. They're not going to buy my product. But you've gone through the list. And if you're talking about schools, then you, which schools? I, I don't, I, I'm surprised I don't have it on here. I have it on another pre presentation I have. My wife gives me a business plan almost twice a week. It's got cereal, ice cream, hamburger, potato chips on it. That's my business plan. You go into Food City and don't come out of here unless you got those. And if you don't have them, then I need to know why. That's the simplest business plan I can show you. And it's just a list. Now, when I get in there and it says potato chips, whew, look at all these potato chips. Which one do I want? Well, there's this, 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 and this. So I've got to make it this. the subjects of potato chips, but there's four or five different kinds. And then there's the barbecue and the, you know, this. So, so that little list, i got a lot of decisions to make. When I get to ice cream, oh, no, well, what, what flavor? Look at all the flavors I got. That's a business plan. Make a list and come up with the answers. That's all we're talking about. Just remember my example of my Food City thing. Boom, 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 boom. That's a business plan. And where am I going? I'm going to get these, these things. And where, what I hope to accomplish, I hope to bring all that stuff home. It's, it's all it's about. It's about planning. This is what I need, and this is, this is what i got to do to get it. It's not, as, not always as easy as a grocery list, but it can be. So when you're talking about locations or you're talking about uh, who your customer is, you know, uh, uh, I work with a lot of nonprofits, and they have customer issues. Who, who do we serve? Or who do we get donations from? Well, we get donations from churches. Well, we've got to increase that. Well, how do we increase it? Give me a list of the churches, and we'll give them a call. It's lists. And this just takes lists and put it into words so that someone who's reading your business plan understands what you're talking about. Did, did, did that answer your, your... Anybody else? Can I, yes? I, I think you mentioned that there's a financial projections workshop coming up. Do you know when, where that will be? Well, I, no, I have a uh, spreadsheet I can email you. Okay. I don't know. I don't... Uh, I don't know of any... Uh, we can chat about it. Okay. I mean, I can. We can chat about it. It's just, it's just a spreadsheet that you're listing everything you can think of, and then putting your numbers by month, and then figuring out at the bottom, and saying. And that's the other thing. That, that, that one last thing. I, I, I know you. The one last thing. When we talk about a business. Are we talk about a spreadsheet? We list in all of our income and all of our expenses, and we add it all up. In the bottom corner, it says $20,000. You have to determine, is that, what, is that my objective for my business, is $20,000? Or does it need to be $200,000? So by doing that projection, by doing the, the spreadsheet and looking at this number, if it's $20,000, you say, you know, uh, I'm going to just stay at McDonald's and clock in and clock out. I don't need insurance. I don't need to worry about it. I don't have customers yelling at me. 
I don't have inventory to buy. I don't have taxes prepared. I just stay where I am because that number is not big enough. So if the number's not big enough, then you've got to say, what do I got to do to make it bigger so that I do want to do this? But that's a key decision. Is that number in the bottom corner here, how much you're going to make per year, if, uh, if you're not making, my, my rule of thumb is you're not making 50000 a year doing your business, you, you should be doing something else. And the reason is the worry and the insurance and the accounting and the customers and the loss of sleep and all, all this other stuff, uh, you need to be making 200 bucks a day. If you're not, then you, you need to stay where you are. Because it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot. And, and, and pardon? Net or gross? Gross. Net or gross? No, no, net, 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 yes. Yeah, because who knows what your overhead is and stuff. Yeah, if you, um, all, insurance you got to have and all this other stuff, it's, uh, like, like she said, you know, or somebody said, eight, uh, we're working 18 hours a day and stuff. If I was being paid at McDonald's 18 hours a day, I'd have made a hell of a lot more than I did on my business. I'm not kidding. 18, I, didn't, I didn't get paid for 18 uh, you know, uh, hours a day, but I had to put it in. And I, I told you I had a storefront. I told you it was a little strip mall. What I didn't tell you was the lack of sleep that I got I would say, well, I'm, I'm getting up at three, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't go back to sleep. So I'd go to my office and work on my drawings. I can't tell you how many times the police came to my storefront and said, what the hell are you doing in here? It's 3 o'clock in the morning. What are you stealing? I said, no, 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 no. I, this is my business. They would, they would come all the time. So you, you can't be in here, pal. <laughs> uh, you know, and two or three cars would come in. I mean, it wasn't just a guy going, hey, what are you doing in there? It was the, it was the whole group. So... This goes to show you, there's, there's a lot going on when you own a business. Anybody else got any questions? We got to go, we got to go, she says, we got to go. <laughs> uh, you have my business card. If you need any documentation, uh, anything, I got tons of this stuff, so just let me know. Thank you. Information overload today. Information overload, absolutely. Yes. You're welcome. So also, I wanted to let you know the next new knowledge will be February 5th. It's something that we see every day. It's on the customer service. So please not plan to be with us if you're part of the business challenge. We will see you Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Thank you for being here. What do you want these sheets at? We'll take them up.